Hey everybody, Chris Pulver here, and in this video, I'd like to tell you why I'm selling my cryptocurrencies, and I'm selling them right now. Now, my goal of sharing this information is not to serve as investment advice in any way, shape, or form, but I'm simply walking you through my experience on why I decided to pull the plug on some of my largest crypto holdings and convert them to cash. So I'll be doing that today and I'll walk you through some of my favorite charts and technical levels to show you exactly where I intend to buy more of these cryptocurrencies. There are levels, there are technical levels that I'm watching in my charts that that's where I'm willing to get back in and reinvest in my cryptos. Now, first and foremost, going into 2021, I was an altcoin bull. I think that everything going into this year was set to outperform Bitcoin. And I was right. You can see that in some of my Pulver Report videos and Keep It Seriously Simple videos. Now, we've seen Bitcoin go from pennies to 20K, then we crashed. We've seen it go from 4,000 when it based in 2019 all the way up to 65,000. And just recently, we've had a wave of bad news for cryptocurrencies, not just Bitcoin, but others. We also saw a fresh ban coming around from China. We've had environmental concerns with the mining costs. Elon Musk has talked about this. Now, if you want more on that, go check out Graham Stephan's video where he does a great job summarizing a Harvard Business Review journal where they're talking about the energy crunch and sustainability of cryptos versus more traditional financing. Now, from there, there's been some panic buying, and we've seen every coin, and I'm talking about Ethereum, Litecoin, Ripple, Bitcoin, Link, Basic Attention Token, Stellar Lumens, EOS, everything. But I think we're due for another flush down to retest some of these recent lows, and that's where I'm looking for accumulation. I'm looking for a base to start building some of these crypto investments once again. So do me a favor, smash that like button, and let's dive into the charts. So here is my Bitcoin chart, and this is some of the analysis I have. Now, take a look. We are currently trading, as I'm doing this video, at $40,000. Now, just in the last week, I'm just going to go from this week right here. We started the week around $46,000. I want to see just in that really aggressive flush over the first couple of days of trading, we went down 35% in three days. Now, what's more interesting to me is that we have dropped from here 53%. From Elon Musk's tweet, putting a little damper in the sentiment of cryptos. They're not environmentally friendly. It's not sustainable energy, blah, blah, blah. Now, what's interesting is, think about this. If we see a 50 plus percent sell-off, in order to get back to the highs, we have to see a 100% gain in Bitcoin. And so it does present a very enticing and compelling investment opportunity to buy as soon as it's crashing. You know, you think about this, from the high to the low, it's dropping 50%, that's on sale, that's a double your money if we get back to those highs. Now, from a technical standpoint, this is what I wanna see because this is what I'm accustomed to seeing in the markets. This is what price action does over and over. I'll just go ahead and draw this. If we see, and this actually is relevant to last year's COVID crash in stocks, if we see this violent crash, right? I am not a fan of just trying to buy the falling knife. But what I saw happen last year on a ton of stocks, we had the COVID crash in 2019 where stocks just dropped and everything was crazy bearish, okay? What was interesting is when that bottom formed, the market had this kind of dead cat bounce. And then prices made their way back down again to challenge the lows. Now, in some stocks, we challenged the low and had this perfect, beautiful double bottom. And then off we went to new highs and fortunes to be made because you couldn't do anything wrong pretty much since April 2020 to present. If you bought some dips, if you bought some COVID crash stocks, some beat up stocks, there were tons of winners out there. Okay. Now, we also had a crash. We had a V bottom. We had a little pullback and we have a cup and handle. When price breaks above this level, it was off to the races and we got all the way back to those highs where COVID crash started and even higher. And that was a massive benchmark and milestone for a lot of these stocks to recover. So whether it was a double bottom or it was a cup and handle, or even in some instances, we had this, we had our crash, we had our bounce, we came back down to retest even a slightly lower low and then price proceeded to go up. You can see this with some type of crown pattern, some type of head and shoulders pattern, but everything in stocks last year looked pretty bullish. What do I expect to see happening from this week's fall? Well, I'm not buying the falling knife. That's what I'm telling you. I'm not buying the falling knife. What I want to see happen instead is there are still levels that I want to see tested. So what I mean by this is we have a nice little pivot cluster right here on Bitcoin. 
25,000 down to 20,000, I think that we can still get to it, okay? Now, if Wednesday sell-off would have come down into this area, I would have been buying Bitcoin and other coins. But because we bounced at 30 and we come back up here, I am now looking for a technical move back down to retest, possibly go a little bit lower, and then I'll start looking for confirmation to start small, right? The last thing I want to do is go heavy into Bitcoin because what if we come all the way back down? What if we come back to 20,000, tap this yearly pivot? What if we come back to 16,000 because momentum has shifted to the bearish side? I mean, you think traders were expecting a move from $20,000 back down to $3,000? Not really. So could we do the same thing again? Very possible. So I'm not in a rush. I think there are levels I'm willing to buy at. I'm still holding Bitcoin with a break even at $3,500. So I am not in a hurry. Now, if I was in no positions of Bitcoin, I'd still be paying attention to these levels. I have a chart alarm set right here at the low at 3375. If it tests that level and flushes down, I will be looking for a trend line break on that next move lower. If it goes lower, wait for a trend line break. I'm looking at buying it here around 25 and around 20,000. I'll probably throw in maybe $500 right here, $500 right here, and then I'll sit and wait. Because if this starts to go sideways, I think we're going to start building a base and accumulating once again. And maybe the rise back up to 65 is slow. And maybe the gaskets broke. Maybe the circuit breaker's broken. Maybe everything just imploded for a second. But I think we can still build a base. I think we can come back down and test those mining costs and then start building a base once again to eventually go back up. Now, we have seen a lot more volatility. We might see that this is a faster recovery. You don't believe me, look at stocks last year. Stocks literally within one month were showing signs of double bottoms, cup and handles, head and shoulders patterns that were bullish and off to the races and they never looked back. So maybe we have the same type of recovery in cryptos. And if that's the case, I'm still gonna miss out on some of the runs, but I'm not panic buying, okay? I wanna see if price can come back in and do what I see price do all the time, which is panics. It works its way back up in a little buying frenzy Short-term traders take those profits and then it works its way back down to see who's down here to buy again, right? And, and that's the question is maybe a lot of people are. Maybe everybody's waiting to buy it down here, but maybe nobody is, <laughs> you know? So if I'm gonna test the levels, I'm gonna test the levels small and make sure that I'm not just getting in heavy and all of a sudden my break even goes from 3,500 to 25,000. That's a substantial difference in a break even level, right? So let's look at some other coins. Let's take a look at Ethereum. Okay, Ethereum versus Bitcoin. This is one thing that I was really, really adamant about going into 2021. Taking a look at this pattern, there is an incredible head and shoulders pattern right here. Left shoulder, head to neckline, right shoulder, and we broke that neckline right there. And so I was number one, bullish on a trend line break. Number two, bullish on the neckline break. And what's amazing is look at how this thing is measured. This is a beautiful pattern right here. We have this low to high. And if you project that move, that's actually what this box is right here. Okay, I take the same box. That's my low to high from right there. And you project that move. And now granted, we saw Ethereum go through that. And that's why I thought, man, for this measured move and all these pivots that are remaining, all these pockets, we've got to have some type of pullback. And so I did look at this chart to protect a lot of my Ethereum and roll that into cash. Now, Ethereum versus the dollar, where are we at? We had a massive drop. And this one was a lot faster because it wasn't as pronounced and predictable as Bitcoin. But we still had a drop here, 57 plus percent. That's a big flush. Okay, now again, there's some panic buying, but hopefully we see this fall, panic buying, and then we see where the buyers really sit. Is it back down at the same lows? Is it back down here between 1250 and 600? Now that might seem insane to think that Ethereum can fall that much, but just take a look at where this whole move started. We started right back here around $1,000, right? So $1,000 would be to me a bargain for Ethereum. And we have a yearly pivot sitting at $530. So I am in, I am in, and then I hold. Right? And I'm still sitting around $300 with my initial Ethereum that I'm still holding. But I did take some profit up here and look at the chart. Just look at the chart, okay? This is not normal. 
This type of behavior right here, straight up, this appreciation was so extreme and so fast. That is 100 plus percent in a matter of a month, about a month of trading, month and a half, okay? So that's a lot of appreciation and all that was giveth was taken away. So the crypto market can giveth and taketh very quickly. We have to be ready for that. Litecoin, Litecoin versus Bitcoin, same thing. Take a look at the chart. An excellent falling wedge. I was bullish on Litecoin. I was bullish on these altcoins outperforming Bitcoin. There's still room, in my opinion, for Litecoin to continue to outperform. Now, we need to see Litecoin establish a base and start working its way back out. Now, if we're excited about wave cycles, we could have a one, two, three. This was a violent four, and we're still looking for a fifth wave to the upside. Or this could be even more dramatic, where this is one, violent wave two, we build a base here, and three is gonna come back and test this high. Which again, leads me to believe that Litecoin can continue to outperform Bitcoin. So let's take a look at the Litecoin versus the dollar chart right here. Litecoin versus the dollar, we had this massive sell-off. Here is, from high to low, what was that flush? Litecoin dropped 65%. That's a lot. And I'm telling you, for tens of thousands of dollars in this position, I would be furious, furious with myself if I let this fall and watch that profit just evaporate. Now, granted, if I don't do anything, if I don't sell it and it ultimately comes back up to highs, that's great. But I can make a lot more money protecting my profit here and buying more down here, right? My break even on Litecoin is under $100. So I'm playing with house money. This was all profit. And I'm looking to get back in. And where am I looking to get back in? Same area. We tap this one. I think that if we end up coming back down to retest this low, which is right around $159, I'm interested in starting small and spacing into this yearly pivot, which is right at 100 bucks. So from essentially 155 or 159 position one, down to $100, position two, and then I wait. And I want to see if we can build a base, start to accumulate over here. Don't be in a hurry right? Don't be impatient because if we're building at one, let's say one, let's just say 150. If we build at 150 with a high of 400, we have an excellent opportunity for big gains. Now it's going to take time, but we'll see. Maybe it doesn't. Maybe it doesn't take a lot of time. Maybe this flushes back down. It's time to buy. We build the base and this thing starts to go back up. We'll find out. Okay. But there are other coins too. Link was another one. I really like Link. I had this in my portfolio. We had this flush down. We pull back up. I'd like to see Link drop back down to where this whole thing started. $16, $12. I'm looking to buy L-I-N-K. Next, uh, Ripple. Actually, XLM USD. This one you can get on Coinbase. This had a really massive push as well. I'm looking for um, anything around $0.20 cents down to $0.13. Cents. So if you're taking notes on this, this is XLM. This is Stellar Lumens. I'm looking for 20 cents to 15 cents. If we have our flush, we have our panic buying, we come back in and settle into these lows, I'm looking for a double bottom. If it goes a little bit lower, I'm looking for confirmation to start buying. I will hold positions in here and up we go. All right. Another one, basic attention token, B-A-T-U-S-D. This one I got out, and this actually I was really happy with. Uh, I was in this one around uh, 20 cents. We went all the way up here to $1.60. The highs around $1.70. When this one was giving me alerts, 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 and we came back to test the high, I ended up closing it out right there. So I was very close to these highs last week when I protected those profits and rolled some of these coin profits into cash. Now I'm sitting on a lot of cash, and I need something to do with it, right? So I'm waiting for these levels. So same thing here. Chart alarm set at the high. Chart alarm set at the low. Can we come back down and test this level? Can we build a base again so we start to accumulate from around 45 to 50 cents down to 20 cents? Level one, level two, and then I'll wait. All right, if, if my base is around 40 cents and we come back up to $1.70, that's a lot of upside potential again on this coin. Okay, what else do we have here? EOS, US dollar, that was another one I was in. EOS US dollar, big flush out on this one. Uh, this one I actually, you know, and I'm probably like, oh, I should have protected it. I didn't protect this one for this reason. Um, a lot of coins I was interested in trading and holding, I was looking back at 2018 highs. So this one has not tested the 2018 highs, which are around $20.
So I'm still in this one with about a $2 entry going after $20. So even though I just experienced a massive deterioration of those profits, I'm just going to sit. I've got a decent position here around $20, uh, $2 and I'm looking for $20 or more. So this one's going to take some time. I might not add to this one at all, but if I'm looking at levels, I like the test of that low from Wednesday the 19th and see if it flushes down a little bit lower. It may settle right back into the yearly pivot between four, three, and $2. And from there, upside to these recent highs, which is around $14, $15, that's a ton of profit from a 2 to $3 base or cost basis. And also we have our 2018 highs, which are above $20. So again, a lot of upside there on EOS. A couple more. Mana, this one here, it did break some structure. We did break these recent lows around a dollar. Um, this one, I'm probably gonna have to add more to it. I'm in here literally at a dollar. Um, yeah, right at a dollar on mana. I was up, you know, 60% on my position. Uh, now, this is position one around a dollar, and I'm looking for how low does it go. If this is my flush, this is my panic buying, this is where it's gonna resettle, I might throw another position in at 50 cents. There's one, and if it comes back down to 20 cents again, there's two. And so if I can try to get my dollar break even to 50 cents or lower, I'll sit here with a 50 cents or lower break even. If we return back to these recent highs, that is a massive upside. That's about 300% profit. Uh, if we get back to these wick highs or longer term go up, it's worth, you know, again, buying low and holding some of these coins. I think there is one more that I can't remember right now. Oh yeah, the old Ripple that no US trader can trade right now. <laughs> Ripple actually stayed fairly steady. Uh, recent low is at 91 cents. Now I have chart alarm set here at $1.71, chart alarm set here at $1.97. My story on Ripple is this. I think that Ripple is going to ultimately be relisted by the SEC. Um, I know you can find some TikTok videos out there and people that are like, there's this happening, this happening behind the scenes and Ripple's going to $10,000. Look, if it is, awesome. Because my break even is 17 cents. So I'm gonna hold this one. I this is another one that I was willing to hold through all this chaos because I'm still interested in the 2018 highs. My 17 cents cost basis to a high in 2018 at $3.30. That's a pretty nice upside. Now, would I like to hold it for more? Yes. If the SEC lets go and stops punishing Ripple and it becomes relisted and it's US tradable again, not to mention globally, I think that this can go to $5, $10. You know, maybe we see something legitimately taking this thing up to $15, $20. What caught my eye on Ripple initially is that this was the one coin that had some heavy investment bank endorsements. I did not see that anywhere else. This was back in 2018. This is back in, you know, several years ago before everything was like, oh, PayPal, Square, and everyone's accepting cryptocurrencies now. Ripple was adopted by major investment banks, okay? So that caught my eye. Now I know that there's a massive supply. There's like virtually an infinite supply or hundreds of billions of coins in Ripple. But I think this could still be an interesting play down the road. And if we didn't get back to these 2018 highs, that's at least a target for me. So for my 17 cents to this high, that's target one, that's a lot of profit. Um, if we have this relisting from the SEC or allowing the uh, the Ripple, Ripple coin to come back on and be traded by everybody globally, then I think that we'd start to break this $2 level and we have a really nice run. So from this first run all the way up to $3 back in 2018, you know, I was in here at 20 cents. I did take some partial profits. I got right back in. The SEC had a little bit of a scare right in there. This is when the SEC kind of crushed it. Now, what's interesting, and this is really sneaky, is that U.S. traders, right, unless they're going with some kind of shady broker out there, uh, U.S. traders could no longer trade. Now, they can, they can hold. They can hold Ripple like I do. I can hold Ripple, but I can't trade it. I can't even sell it. I can't convert this right now. So even if price goes all the way up to $3.30, I have no way of getting rid of it. So I'm gonna have to talk to some friends on this one to see who wants to buy my Ripple. But like I said, if the SEC lets go of the reins and frees up Ripple to be relisted and bought with you know the, the massive supply that it has, maybe this is something that long-term can be a $100 coin, can be a $1,000 coin. And from a 17 cent break even, or even here at $1.20, you know, again, very limited downside with hopefully exponential upside. 
And, and my last piece here on these cryptocurrencies, I hope this helps, number one, you know, check out some of these technical levels. My, my plan is this. We had a massive flush in these coins, right? The low was established. Now, what I'm looking for is when we saw the panic buying ensue, it's coming back up. Test these levels of maybe past support to become resistance and the market makes its way back down. This right here is a short-term jump in the crypto market. I think that this short term, you're gonna see heavy buying come in, heavy profit taking. And what's, what's interesting is I wouldn't be surprised if we saw holders from here, buy here, get out at break even, and then wait to see if there's a chance to buy lower again. And that's where I'm at, okay? My break even is way lower, right? I wasn't, all I was doing was protecting profits near the highs. That's step number one. Now I'm waiting for my opportunity to strike again. And last thing I'm gonna say for this video is long-term. Here's what I hope for people out there that are involved in cryptocurrencies. I hope that this is the great equalizer. I hope this is the way that you can take a little amount of capital or, or a lot of capital, right? But some capital and you can make a lot of money. I hope that people that are involved in cryptocurrencies make so much money that they can actually learn how to trade and protect it, right? I mean, again, we have not seen this type of wealth generated in any asset class in a long, long time. If cryptocurrencies are the great equalizer, if it is this kind of millennial, younger generation, new breed of traders lottery ticket, I'm all for it. I would love to have people make a ton of money, make a fortune, make a lifetime worth of earnings. But the most important thing is you find a way to manage it. And as I say, we trade to be profitable, not perfect. Cryptos is not a perfect market. Stocks, options, futures, Forex, not perfect markets, but there's endless amounts of opportunity and I hope you can find it. So happy trading, lots of profits. I'll see you in the markets. Take care.